All right, so colligative properties are properties that depend on how many particles are present in solution and not what type. Now, that, that, that can be a, a bit confusing, um, but I'll explain it as we go. Um, really, what you're just trying to find is how many moles of solute particles. So that's really the, the, the key uh, number that you're looking for is moles of solute particles. Um, and what we're going to do is probably be given a number of grams of solute, uh, which you then change to moles of solute, and then to moles of solute particles um, by multiplying by how many it, it, it dissociates or breaks into when you dissolve it. And as I said, I'll explain that as we go. Uh, the two colligative properties that we're going to cover in this class uh, our freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. Uh, these other two we'll do next year in advanced chemistry uh, if you take advanced chemistry with me. So here we go. All right, so a freezing point depression. Now what this is saying is uh, if you have a solute dissolved in a solvent, mostly water that we're going to deal with, but not always, um, it will lower the freezing point of the solute, solvent, sorry, of the solvent. Um, we know water boils at, or sorry, freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But, you know, scientifically we're going to talk about degrees Celsius and we know that, you know, it freezes at zero Celsius. That's a pure water under perfect conditions, under standard conditions, it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Well, what this is saying is when you dissolve something in it, so a solute, it lowers the freezing point. This is why you throw rock salt on ice in the wintertime. It forms this rock salt water solution, and then it doesn't freeze at zero degrees anymore, but it actually lowers the freezing point down. And if it lowers it down to the point where it's no longer cold enough outside to make it freeze, it, it changes to water. And so the ice melts off of your sidewalk. Uh, so a solute will lower the freezing point of a solvent. Here's the formula. Delta T, change in temperature, is equal to I times M times Kf. So this is the simplified version of doing this. Uh, in advanced chemistry next year, we get a little more involved with this whole I thing and how it ionizes. Uh, for now, for this year, I'm going to tell you how many particles it breaks into, although you'll probably be able to figure it out. Um, and again, I'll get to that when we do one. Um, the lowercase m is molality, which we just did with uh, a new, that new, new unit of concentration, moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. And then this K value. So we have I, M, and K. K comes from uh, a, a table. You just look it up. Here's one uh, that I cut and pasted here. Um, you know, and water is the one we're mostly going to do. So water, water has a Kf value, so a freezing value of 1.85. Notice the units degree C per molal. It freezes at 0 degrees. It has a Kb, so a boiling point and the boiling point in terms of temperature. Um, all right, so the next one then is boiling point elevation. So the boiling point goes up when you add a solute to a solvent and make a solution. So the pure solvent, if we're talking water again, it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. If you put something in the water to make a solution, it is going to cause uh, the boiling point to rise. So it makes the freezing point go down, and it makes the boiling point go up. Notice the formula, same I, M, and K. All right, let's try one, and I think you'll find that uh, the calculation itself is not terribly difficult. Uh, let me change to a, okay, here we go. Um, if 85 grams, now here's the key where we're talking ionization. So that delta T equals I, M, and K. A non-ionizing solute, I will always be equal to 1. So what that means is it does not dissociate into more particles. It simply dissolves, but it stays C12H22O11. So you get one particle of C12H22O11 when you dissolve sucrose. Uh, now, how are you going to identify that? Well, I'm going to say it in the problems for us. Um, but if it doesn't say that, it would have covalent bonds. So the fact that it has um, covalent bonds, meaning it's not ionic, Therefore, it's not going to ionize into more than one particle or dissociate into more than one particle. So anytime it's covalent, so all nonmetals like that, uh, it is going to be an I value equal to 1. All right, so I, M, and K. So we need, I already said, I is going to be equal to 1 because it is non-ionizing. Lowercase m, that's molality. So molality equals moles 
of solute divided by kilogram of solvent. So we need moles of solute, so 85 grams of C12, H2011, the molar mass of that is 342 grams in a mole. 85 divided by 342, and we get uh, 0.249, so 0.249 moles of solute. 0.249 moles of solute divided by we are dissolved in 495 grams of water so that's the solvent so we make that kilograms by make, moving it over three so one two three to the left and it becomes 0.495 kilograms and you get 0.249 divided by 0.495 and we get 0 0.503 now what that is is equal to the molality so now we have the molality so we know little m, 0.503 for the molality. Now it says find the boiling point and the freezing point. So let's do the freezing point here. We'll make it, I'll uh, do that one first. So then we need that um, K value from that chart that I had on the last page, um, this one right here. So we're talking um, freezing. So KF for freezing for water is 1.853 degrees C per molal. So one point 853 degrees C per molal. This was molal, so the degrees C will be the units for the change in temperature. 1.85 times 1 times 1.853, we got uh, 0.932 degrees C. So that is the change in temperature. The freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius. Remember, the freezing point goes down, whatever the delta T is, 0 0.932 degrees C. And so the answer will be negative 0.932 degrees Celsius. So pure water will freeze at zero. This solution of water with sucrose dissolved in it will freeze at negative 0.932 degrees Celsius. Uh, the difference in the change in temperature calculation for boiling point, well, delta T is equal to I, M, and K again. So one, because it's non-ionizing. The same solution, so the molality is 0 0.503. The difference is the K value when you boil water. Let's go back a couple. So now we're KB for boiling is 0.515. So a different constant, 0.515 degrees C per molal. The degrees C, once again, will be the units. So you have uh, 0.5. 0, 03 times 0.515, and we get 0 0.259 degrees Celsius. Um, that's the change in temperature. Water normally boils at 100 degrees, so we add the 0 0.259, and you get, um, run out of space there, I'll go up here, 100.259 degrees C. So the freezing point goes down, equal to delta T, the boiling point goes up, whatever the delta T is. All right, let's try one where it does ionize. Um, now, this year in class, I am going to tell you, in previous years, we've had a little more time between midterms and now, and so um, I made them learn how to get um, what the delta T, or I'm sorry, what the I value would be. Uh, but you can kind of tell, this is ionic. It's a metal and a non-metal, so an ionic. And when this thing dissolves, it's going to separate or dissociate into its ions. You're going to get one calcium and two chlorine, so a total of three ions formed. That means you're going to have three times the number of moles of solute particles than you would moles of solute. So uh, there are several ways you could deal with that. You could do it in the molality, or you could just put it in the formula the way I have it written. So, um, you know, delta T is equal to, once again, I, M, and K. So I, for the freezing point, I'll do the freezing point here, um, and then I'll do the boiling point at the same time this time. I, M, and K. And once again, the um, boiling point is going to be um, three, because that's I. So it ionizes into three ions. Times M, lowercase m, the molality. So we need to change 39.5 grams of CaCl2 to moles. Uh, the molar mass is 111.1, 39.5 divided by 111.1, and you got 0 0.356. So 0 0.356 moles. We'll divide that by the kilograms of water. Again, the, the formula for molality, moles of solute, divided by kilograms of the solvent. The solvent is water. So 0 0.95 kilograms, 0 0.356 divided by 0 0.950, and we got a molality of 0 0.374. 
So 0.374 molal. And again, the same for the boiling because it's the same solution. We're trying to figure out what does it boil at, what does it freeze at. Now, once again, the solvent is water, so we would go back to that uh, same chart we used before to find the K value, 0.515 degrees C per molal for boiling, um, and for freezing, uh, 1.853 degrees C per molal. The molals cancel, the molals cancel. Uh, both of these then are equal to degrees Celsius, 3 times 0.374 times 1.853, and we got 2.08 degrees C for the change in temperature for the freezing point. So 0 minus 2.08 is negative 2.08 degrees C. For the boiling, 3 times 0.374 times 0.515 is the point, 0.515. Uh, 0.5 seven eight degrees C 100 is the boiling point plus 0.578 is 100.578 degrees C all right so that's colligative properties um, notice I did them both of water if it was not water the only difference would be instead of using these values for the K's you'd use well let's say we're doing phenol you'd use 7.4 for the freezing you'd use 3.6 for the boiling when you're talking about K and then when you subtract the delta T from the freezing point it's not zero because that's what water freezes at phenol freezes at 40.9 so you would subtract the delta T from 40.9 and you would add the delta T uh, to 181 so that's that that's freezing point um, and boiling point changes due to a solution compared to the solvent